Hello, welcome to a visit with Nana and Papa. I'm Nana. I'm Papa. We're coming to you from <laughs> Colleen, Texas, <coughs> where we now live. And um, it is really dreary outside. And thunderstorms are There may be through. some. There may be some thunder boomers. There may be whatever, but we're both physically. Okay, I wouldn't say we're great, but we're okay today at the moment. Okay is a tad bit generous by some people's standards. We're, we're able to record, so we're, we're going to wing it the best we can anyway. Well, we had a friend request it this morning, so I'm doing my best. Okay, so the whole making things, I really don't have a lot because <laughs> I haven't been able to make like I um, want to. So there's so many um, projects that have no progress really to speak of. Um, I do have uh, the sweater for Miss Joyce, Dr. Joyce, and um, I am working on it, but Sometimes I pick it up and I'm able to do two or three rows and sometimes I pick it up and I'm only able to do 10 stitches and I'm in pain. So I'm, I'm just doing what I can and when it starts to hurt, I stop. So this is the completed, I don't know if I showed it last time, but I don't think I did. Um, I don't like the beak. I don't have the eyes on yet, but I'm going to embroider eyes on there. And, um, I don't hate it, but I feel like I should have used heavier. I used fingering weight held double and the pattern calls for worsted. So I wish that maybe I would have held it triple or that I, like, I wish I had done something different. So it was stiffer and bigger. And, and okay. Having grown up on a farm and knowing what chickens look like, that chicken is a funky chicken. <laughs> that ass on that chicken. Look at it. Hey, a rocket propelled chicken. <laughs> I thought for um, for a minute that it was taking a dump. And because yeah, look at this. Chicken yes, don't anyway, look like that. I know it doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> well, it does to me. It does not. Uh, funky chicken. So the, this one is gonna be. Um, I'm still. I made it for Claire. I'll still send it to Claire, but I'm. I don't love it. But I'm glad I made it. And I enjoyed making it, and it didn't hurt to make it, so I cast on another. And this time I'm holding DK weight <coughs> with two strands of mohair. And I'm only using scraps. I'm using little bits of this and little bits of that because, to me, that's the best use and the best way. So I'm almost out of this main DK strand so it'll be a different before I finish the the tails and that's okay and um this is literally all I really had to to talk about because everything else I haven't worked on his gym sweater because every time I pick it up I do not even 20 stitches and I'm in pain and so we have decided that that project just needs to be on hold until my arm is better. And I don't know why this morning I was on Zoom with my friends and I was able to do this. This is not a lot of knitting, but I was able to do all of these stitches without any pain. Because you're talking to your friends. No, I think, I think it's because I was at the table and both arms were... Like they did, the arms didn't move, so the shoulder didn't move. It could be. And so, basically, I need a pillow to keep my arm on so that my, anyway, so that it doesn't move. So, um, I can't tell you what yarns these are. Um, I will tell you that my scraps, most of my scraps for this chicken are going to be from Urban Girl Yarns. But what the names of the colorways are, I don't remember. They're leftovers from a sweater that I made. And I honestly don't even remember the name of the sweater that I made. Or it's the designer. It's not like you haven't made a few sweaters, baby. But, but it all, is <laughs> all from, 
from Urban, I do remember that they're Urban Girl Yarns colors, but, uh, but which is which. And you won't be able to see them and they won't look anything like them because I'm putting the, at the moment it's a dark green and a gray mohair. And then when I run out of that, I have, or if I just decide to change it up, I have some leftover dark blue mohair and then I have some leftover yellow if I can find it that I'll use for the beak and anyway I'm not worrying about the colors so much I'm just using up scraps so, you're worried that the colors don't look god awful together but other than that other than yeah I'm not I'm not intentionally and I'm yeah. trying not to use pastels or bright pinks because it's going to my grandson and my grandson would not be thrilled if I, okay, my grandson's parents would not be thrilled if I sent them a bright pink something for my grandson. <laughs> so, but that's all I have at the moment. Books. Besides his stuff, which is, and I will have something along those lines. Baby so. doll actually <laughs> read a book. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Okay, my books have both been Rick Riordan. I have now completed all of the uh, Rick Riordan uh, Greek series. And I am taking a break from the Rick Riordan to read the uh, finishing up some uh, DK Holmberg stuff. And he's finished a couple of series and started a couple of series. One of the series I'm kind of, eh, I don't know. It's real easy to put down and pick up, put down and pick up. It's not a, oh, I got to see what's happening next. It's, yeah, I'll see. Uh, so for me, that's not really a great read. That's just a read. Uh, occasionally it gets interesting, but usually it's just a read. So can we back up a minute? Yeah. A lot of these people won't have any idea what Rick Riordan series you're talking about. <laughs> Okay. And they won't know that there's multiple series and that you've read more than one series since you last talked to them about books. So why don't you go back up a little bit and go to the beginning. In the beginning, about, talk, Rick Riordan had a son who was dyslexic. No, I don't have to go that far. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, because Lord. his son felt that he was inadequate because he was dyslexic, Rick Riordan would tell him bedtime stories about Greek demigods and the Greek demigods were dyslexic and the reason they were dyslexic is because the godly side of their body was pre-programmed to read ancient Greek so reading English was difficult for their brain because their brain was meant to read ancient Greek and he would tell his son stories about these demigods to make his son happy and his son would share these stories with his friends and then his friends wanted Mr. Riordan to tell them stories. And pretty soon, these bedtime stories to his dyslexic child turned into Percy Jackson, the lightning thief. It's a little and different than that. You're close. Percy Jackson, the lightning thief, but became an entire story about... Pause. You messed that up. I did not. Yes, yes, you did. You went a fact you? check. Fact what? check. Fact check what? He read them to his son, and his son loved him so much... He was an English teacher. He decided to share them with his students in his classroom. And the students in the classroom liked the book so much, they convinced him that he needed to write them down. Hmm. That is. Hey. So don't go sideways now. Back to. <laughs> Y'all fact checked our fact checker. Find out what is the fact. Because Rick Riordan, really a good person. I like him a lot. Uh, he's done a lot of good in the world and he's worked very hard at making everything very inclusive and he's taken a lot of grief for making things inclusive but uh, respect dude uh, you, you did what you wanted anyway uh, he wrote the Percy Jackson series and finished that up and then he decided he would write the same gods from the Roman perspective because when the Romans conquered the Greeks. Apparently the Romans didn't like the gods they had before they conquered the Greeks. And they thought, wow, the Greeks gods did such a good job of letting them lose the war. We'll start worshiping them too. 
So they, they took the defeated Greek gods and made them their own, but they Romanized them and changed them. Some of them changed a lot. Some of them barely changed at all. But <coughs> Rick Riordan wrote another series of books uh, based on these guys. That was, that was the blood of Olympus. Heroes of Olympus was Percy Jackson. The blood of Olympus was Percy Jackson and Jason Grace. And then uh, he proceeded to, at the end, at the last book of uh, the Jason Grace series, Apollo is the scapegoat for all the bad stuff that's happened. So Zeus punishes Apollo by turning him into a 16-year-old mortal named Lester Papadopoulos and throwing him into a dumpster in New York City. That's where you pick up the next series, which is The Trials of Apollo, and it is five books about Apollo having to perform a certain number of uh, adventures, quests, to uh, get back in the good graces of Zeus and to achieve his godhood. But in the process of becoming a god again, he learns how to be a human. And he learns how to actually have values that the Greek gods did not originally possess because his time as a human taught him to care about other people, taught him a lot of things that we take for granted. So once again, a very good series. Uh, next up would be the uh, Magnus Chase. And I'm taking a break, finishing up some other stuff, and I'll get into Magnus Chase sometime this month, probably next week. But uh, I know Rick Riordan doesn't watch this, but any of y'all... Uh, Follow Rick Riordan, send him a buzz, just a buzz, and mention that in the Trials of Apollo, he set up the groundwork for a whole new series about Nico D'Angelo, the uh, demigod son of Hades. And then he abandoned that and he went off and did this. Uh, Going Chase book. Yeah. So but maybe we could spur did my favorite series. He did that before. But the, still, he did my she, favorite. He did another series about the Egyptian gods, and that's the one that she really likes. But he did that during the uh, Percy Jackson series and during the Jason, Jason Grace series. So they are a standalone series. They had a couple of crossover stories where... Uh, Percy showed up and helped out the uh, the Egyptian guys, but pretty much they're not involved because <clears throat> they weren't involved. But it's a really really good series. So uh, if you like if you like the first ones, just know you will probably like the other. Well, maybe not because Jim doesn't like the fact that there's a brother and a sister, and sometimes if my memory serves me correct, don't they flip? No. You're thinking of the, oh no, uh, that's a different series. Other series where the the <clears throat> she's thinking of a completely different author, so don't worry. And that's it. Uh, but in the Egypt ones, it's really good. It's just totally different because the gods are different and the mythology is different. The storyline is very different. But uh, the the uh, chase books are about the Asgardian. Uh, pantheon so um, I, I think maybe the reason that he pursued the uh, Asgard instead of doing the Nico D'Angelo is he did not have to rehash existing gods he could bring in a whole new pantheon and start from scratch that may be plus he's probably tired of writing about the dang god, same characters and the same gods it's not that interesting well, he was going with the uh, the Nico D'Angelo. So it would have been interesting from a different point of view, but I will not spoil still, that point of view. But it still would have been the same gods and having to write an entire storyline around the same set of gods. And it would have required for Apollo to have stayed a decent god and not turn back into the same god he was before. So I'm so, just saying, uh, we don't know and it's okay. Moving on. Uh, uh, but you read way more than just that. I did? Yeah. What did I read? 
You've read so much stuff. You read stuff by what's his name? Um, D.K. Holmberg. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll talk about that when I talk about all the D.K. Holmberg. But uh, and I mentioned it briefly. Uh, Chainbreaker series is is wrapped up. I'm reading the last book of that right now. Uh, be interesting to see how he actually wraps that up. Um, could be really good. Could just be over. We're totally forgetting like the things that I don't know why, but maybe you don't. What this man? I tell you, opinionated when it comes to errors in a book. And the excitement that comes over him when the author actually uses a word correctly that they've used incorrectly through the previous however many books. Okay, that is a given with D.K. Holmberg and Jonathan Muller. And uh, D.K. Holmberg is co-writing with uh, uh, Dan Michelson. And I don't know if he's really co-writing with him or if he's just co-printing with him. Uh, back in the day, established authors like Clive Cussler would help out up-and-coming authors who could not get published because the publishing house just, eh, I don't care. It'd be competition for somebody that I've already got. No. Nope. So Clive Cussler would say, okay, I'll co-write with you. And most of his co-writing was he read their book and said, okay. And they well, just put their name. We don't know that, but, but, but yes. <clears throat> Moving. Now, with independent publishing and uh, the fact that you can publish on Amazon and you don't need a print house. You don't need a publisher to actually print a book for you and put it out in the market. It doesn't have to go to Barnes & Noble to get sold. It can be sold on Amazon. It can be put in Amazon's Kindle Unlimited, and you can read it for free. And they get paid like a dollar or whatever every time somebody reads their book. Except for their first book, they don't get paid at all. Their first book, if enough people read their first book, then their second book they will actually start getting money for. And they can't start charging until after they've actually had enough people read their books. So it's a great thing for new authors, but it's also limiting to new authors because they can only publish on Amazon. They have to sign a, an exclusive agreement with Amazon that this book will only be given to Amazon and Kindle Unlimited. And if they want to give it to anybody else to get to a bigger reading platform, they have to take it off from Amazon. So, uh, you will find certain authors bounce back and forth. Some of the authors will have a free series on Amazon that is a paid for series somewhere else. Or they'll have a paid for series on Amazon that is free on script. So, if you have, it, it pays to investigate what you can do. Uh, all of the all of the Rick Riordan books are available through the library. So that's how I read them is through the library. If you don't support your local libraries, I encourage you to support your local libraries because if they aren't supported, then they They're become government dependent. Away. And if they are government dependent, then they are government controlled. And then they will start doing the same thing that school libraries are doing and book bans. Because, you know, nothing says Nazi Germany like a good book burning. Good book burning. And the only difference between a book ban and a book burning is the fire. I'm once you, you, once you decide that nobody should read this book, you have taken free will and free choice out. What you doing, lover? I'm trying to find my needle for weaving in the end. But anyway, <clears throat> that being said, support your local library. Uh, get yourself a library card. Uh, that is, if they read. If you read. 
I, I encourage everybody to read You're Never Too Old to Start. Uh, reading Expand Your Horizons. Uh, everything that has been invented in the uh, 20th and the 21st century was invented by somebody that read. Oh, this is true. Uh, case in point, the taser. Taser doesn't stand for anything like a laser or anything else. Taser, T-A-S-E-R, stands for T.A. Swift Electric Rifle. Because T.A. Swift's hero did not kill people. He used an electric rifle that would stun them and then he would cuff them and take them into custody and put them in jail. And a young man was so impressed with this electric rifle that didn't have to kill anybody that when he grew up, he endeavored to cre recreate this electric rifle. And what he came up with was what we now have as a taser. And TASER stands for T.A. Swift Electric Rifle. Never would have come into being if T.A. Swift had not created that electric rifle for a character a long time ago. Fact check it. Maybe that's going to be the name of this episode. Fact check it. Yeah, I like that. Fact check it. You crank me up. Crank. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so... Uh, did we watch any movies? Yes, yeah. we watched uh, The Marvels, and oh, yeah. I liked The Marvels. I thought it was an enjoyable movie, and everybody says that uh, did so terribly because they made it all girls, and they, they made it, it did so terribly because it, it wasn't uh, thought out well, and it did, had plot holes. Congratulations, you're talking about comic book movies. They always have plot holes. There's no such thing as a comic book movie without a plot hole. The movie was fun. The movie was enjoyable. And the reason it didn't do so well in the theaters, in my opinion, when I wanted to see that movie in the theater, the local AMC theaters had it on one screen and it had it for one showing. And that one showing was usually at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. So... If that movie had been on two or three screens and a full daytime four showings that you could pick and go to, would more people have seen that movie? Odds are very good that they would have. With only being able to see it one time a day and that's at 9 or 10 o'clock at night, are less people going to be able to go see that movie, especially on a weeknight? Yeah, but did they make that decision based on... Silly reviews by review movie reviewers. I mean, we don't know where that decision was. Doesn't made. matter where the decision came from. They didn't show the movie, and a movie anyway. cannot do well at the theater if it doesn't get shown at the theater. This is a true statement, but anyway, come our, on. Our next up uh, is uh, Willy Wonka, but during the move, <clears throat> the TV power cord got separated from the TV. And we have yet to unpack all of our boxes, so. And we do not know what box the TV's power cord so went just, into. We're just gonna have to unpack everything. So, and then once everything is unpacked, surely we'll come across it at some point in there. So, uh, but uh, yeah, haven't been seeing a lot of movies, haven't been seeing a lot of TV. We are, uh, as soon as we get that power cord, uh, a Alien Resident Season 3 is out and as soon as we can actually sit here on our love seat and watch it together we will be watching Alien Resident Season 3 uh, if you haven't seen it it came on Sci-Fi originally and now it's on Netflix and Sci-Fi so uh, give it a go I like it, it's entertaining it's different <laughs> definitely different anything to add my love? Yeah, we, well, there's other stuff we need to talk oh, about. Oh, your book. Yeah, well, there's my book. Valerie read a book. It's called The Adventure Secret, and the author is Chad Morris. And I I purchased it. I don't even know where I purchased it. Maybe Walmart. Did you purchase it, or did I purchase it? No, I purchased it, I remember. Cambridge Hall, list price 34% off MSRP. 
Yeah. Huh. So anyway, I bought it, and I bought it because the author Brandon Mole said that it was a fantastic futuristic read, and um, and we I really like Brandon Mole. Love Brandon Mole's um, Fable Haven. If you haven't read Fable Haven and you like young adult um, fantasy, as far as I'm concerned, there's no better series for fa- for fantasy. I don't know. But anyway, I just loved it. Fable I, Haven I, I, was I don't know that so I would good. go that far, but it is a great series. It is I so love good. Brandon Mole. And I have not actually disliked anything and there Brandon were Mole no, wrote. Brandon Mole, there are no annoying... Where was your editor? Like, <laughs> those books are fully copywritten. You know, they've actually had a edited. copy editor. They've actually had somebody looking for. Uh, are you changing uh, S T E L S to S T E A L or uh, T H I E R to T H E R E? Yeah, it's yeah. and it's it's a lot easier to read his books because they don't have all the errors that. There, there's no grammatical sex changes where in this paragraph it's a boy and in this paragraph it's a girl and in this paragraph it's a boy again, and you go well pick one. Yeah, uh, maybe they're gender fluid. No. Maybe could be. I'm no, just saying. The rest of the story be. has no gender fluidity in it. <laughs> this person just got. Uh, ah. No radical sex change at the moment. Anyway. Long story short, um, this book, I couldn't knit yesterday. I could not find anything that would let me knit, and I was just really wanting to do something that wasn't work. And so I remembered I had come across this book in cleaning and pack- unpacking, So and I hadn't read it yet. So I picked it up and started reading, and... Now, we've had the book probably for years. Just don't want you to think that we just picked it up because it's been here in our stuff. We just, I just hadn't read it. Anyway, um, I finished it last night. I did not go to bed at a decent hour because I could not put the book away. Two o'clock. Yeah, I kept reading. But anyway, it was really good. And it's not, oh, excuse me. It is not a I'm trying to think of the word. It's not something that's really um, you're not gonna see it on any college syllabus. You know, it's not one of those. <laughs> it's it's just a fun divergence from or um, distraction from reality. Um, there's a good guy, there's a really bad guy, but you don't really see the good guy or the bad guy through most of the book. Um, it, you see these kids and these kids who are trying to solve a mystery and trying to save their family. So it's really, really good. And uh, I would recommend, I would say on a book, it's definitely a four for me. I want out of a five. I wouldn't call it a five because a five would make me want more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's one of those books where you wish, like Odd Thomas. Odd Thomas, by far a number five. I wanted more. Odd, yeah, I wanted more Odd Thomas the minute I finished reading the book. But so did everybody else. Okay, just a little bit on Odd Thomas. Dean Koontz normally only writes one book, one character, boom, one and done. And then he wrote Odd Thomas, and the reception for Odd oh, Thomas was so strong. So many people wrote in and said, we want some more Odd. That's he wrote another so book. Good. And like, he wound up having five I think five books about Odd Thomas. five, and then some short stories. And, and that opened up the floodgates for Dean Koontz, and Dean Koontz started writing entire series about other characters. But uh, Odd was the first Odd was the first one to have his so own good. series. So uh, there was another one character you, had two books. I Warning, I don't do scary as a general rule. And there are elements of Odd Thomas that are not G-rated. Odd sees dead people. 
Yeah, they, you don't need to. That's ruining the book for people who. No, have, it isn't. Yes, it is. It's you find out when you're reading it, but it's not something that you find out in the very first chapter. Yes, but you find out when you're reading you it. You find out when you read the dust jacket, when you read anything I'll anyway. write about Odd Thomas. It's going to tell you. This is a young man in Pico Mundo, California, Ooh. who sees dead people. Yeah, so that was one of my favorite reads, and I'll probably reread it again because I enjoyed it so much. But anyway, so this book for me gets a four. It's definitely fast. You can finish it rather quickly. I did not pick up that book until 6 p.m., so somewhere around there. It was not early in the day, but then I didn't put it down until it was done, which you'll have that sometimes. Anyway, um, if I am, I don't know why I have the yonitis. I'm so sorry, y'all. If I have... Um, <laughs> you stayed up all night reading the book. That too. I, um, <laughs> I don't know why I have gone. I to say you just told him you stayed up all night reading well, a book. There's that. Oh um, <laughs> I I think I want to read more, but reading has always interfered with my knitting, and oh, horrible, horrible. I don't like narrators as a general rule for for non, I mean, for fiction. Because the voices don't sound like I would want them, you know what I mean? Like, when I read, I can use my imagination when a narrator is reading it. They're defining for me what it looks like. Sounds the exception like, being Kevin Hood's <coughs> Iron Druid series, and you like that guy. Yes. Um, I do. So, I'm real picky about, and I wonder if that anybody else has that, where they're super picky about who their narrator is. But the other reason I think that I'm okay with the Iron Druid series is that I read the first two books, read them myself, so I already had a visual in my brain of the Iron Druid himself and of his dog. Do you know what I mean? Speaking of which, if you have not read the Iron Druid and you <laughs> like fantasy, this is a okay. It's fantasy, but it's a different kind of fantasy. It's, it's a the best. It's fantasy. the best. It is. It is about a druid who is two thousand years old. Who lives amongst us in this time? And he looks like he's twenty, because <laughs> he has. Teas that he learned how to make from this ancient druid 2,000 years ago. And one of them is immortality. And if you drink this tea on a regular basis, you don't <coughs> age. And it heals and fixes everything that's wrong with you. And he takes it and he gives it to his dog, Oberon. So he has an Irish wolfhound who is 25 years old. And in perfect uh, health. Irish wolfhounds don't live to be 25 years old. <laughs> but Oberon, being a dog, has no idea how old he is or that he is unnaturally old for a dog. Oberon is a hoot. O Oberon is the comic relief in the books. But one of the beautiful things about Kevin Hearn is Kevin Hearn, this book is about a druid and most specifically about the Irish Pantheon. Yeah. But it has guest appearances by all of the Pantheons. From and every continent. There's a lot of Asgard Pantheon in it. Uh, but Kevin Hearn does this thing where it is you are invited to join him on an adventure of silliness and fun yeah. and uh every religion that has ever existed okay don't know no, no, is no. there that you just let it go yes dear read it i loved it i, I think i have read the iron druid series like three times i know when, you need to read it when again. i am between books series when uh my, when my regular authors have all dried up and there's nothing going on new in the world 
I have been known to reread the Iron Druid series just because. It's so worth it. And he's got the Ink and Siegel series. His next, his third book should be coming out this year for Ink and Siegel. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, his third book, the final book in the uh, Plague of Giants, came out in November. And uh, the libraries only have it in audiobook, and she likes audiobooks. I don't. Uh, I have my own brain that makes my own characters voices so I don't care for this and there are so many characters in there the, uh, are so many there are tons that of uh, it is very difficult for the narrator to produce enough distinct voices that you can know this is this person's voice, well, I, this is this I person's voice. I couldn't listen to the the giants, whatever plague of giants yeah. or whatever. I can't I can't do that story on audiobook at all. Now see, for me, this would be something that if you took a group of friends that like to read the same books and you would have a Zoom every Tuesday night at seven and you would all get together and you would read this chapter. And Valerie is this character. And Jim is this character. And Nancy is this character. And Abigail is this character. Everybody is a character. You're always that character throughout the book. That would and be fun. It, that it, would re it be requires fun. that you actually read this in advance. Because if Valerie shows up and hasn't got a clue what her character is saying. How her character should be responding. And she's just reading. Oh my. I think. I I think you stink. We will be having words with Valerie, and Valerie may be cast out. <laughs> so you're saying that Plague of Giants would be a very good... Can, may be good converted to the screen or to a, a theater yeah. production? Well, yeah, it would be good. But it would also be good just as a reading production where... Instead of having one person have to come up with the personality and the voice for right. everybody, you have people who just want to enjoy reading together. And this girl thinks that she's got the pixie in her and she wants to read this character. Great. Angela, you're the pixie. Anyway, let's see. What's it, I feel like there's other stuff we were supposed to talk about and haven't. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, I wanted you to tell everybody what's going on life-wise. We're doing good. We're not completely settled in, but we're a lot more settled in than we were. We'd be doing a lot better if I was doing better and I'd get boxes unboxed. Uh, last couple of weeks not been my best weeks, but it's okay. And then um, work is work. I do way too much, but... For way too little and no appreciation, but anyway. Anyway, the joy of salary. Because um, they outlawed slavery, so they just took the V out. Yeah, slavery is now called salary. Um, kind of different spelling, but you get to jest. And then... Trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted. Oh! I didn't talk about what acquisitions. I do want to show you what came in the mail because it's cool. <laughs> and I go that way, I think. There you go. Tell them a story or a joke. <laughs> Tell them a story or a joke, huh? Oh. Let's see. I went to uh, Sports Clips to get my hair cut when we um, got here. So y'all saw me with the haircut and the shave and go, oh my God, who's that guy? That's me. That's, that, that's my summer look. Uh, but the young lady that cut my hair was cutting my hair based on a photograph. Ow. You could have just left it. Yeah, I could have. Uh, but uh, the photograph only showed this side of my head. So she was not aware that this part goes here. So there, she did not have a part. And when I showed her the part, she like, oh. And then she just combed my hair and 
greases it down and slaps it over. And I'm like, there you go. Okay. Well, it looks all right. I got home. My wife thought it looks all right. Well, when the grease comes out and the hair went, Fish! it did not look all right. It looked stupid. So I called him up after a week of trying to get it tamed down and taking scissors and going, <laughs> oh, that's better. I said, hey, can y'all fix this? I said, sure, come on in. And I went in and uh, Jaina fixed it for free. And she did a good job. I like it. She, did, much she did well. And I figured, you know, Jaina didn't charge me for the haircut. And she, I think fixing is a lot more work than just doing. If she'd tightened the kid in from scratch, and she probably wouldn't have to do as much work. So I still gave Jaina a $5 tip just because Jaina was kind enough to do it for free. And she made me look, uh, if I look goofy, it's not because of my hair. You look good to me. That's all that matters, my beautiful. All right. Okay. Now, so, you got your acquisitions. Show your peoples. Well, so I have a sport weight yarn. It's from Yarn Cafe Creations. It is spiked ginger coffee in the sport weight. And I'm not certain, but I'm thinking I'm going to use this in a sweater. With purple and cream. Spiked ginger coffee. What did you spike it with? I wonder. I have no idea. I didn't make it. It just says spiked well, no, ginger coffee. Well, no, if you were going to have ginger... Hey, I've never thought about having ginger coffee, so that might actually be a thought. But if I was going to spike ginger coffee, what would I put in it? Kahlua? No. Oh, my God. I don't know. I've never had Kahlua, so I don't know. Really? You and one other person <laughs> on the planet... I don't like coffee. Why would I order a Kahlua because and coffee a, because if a I black hate red, coffee? Because a black Russian is made with Kahlua. Uh, it's, a Kahlua is a coffee liqueur, but it's a that's a staple in bar drinks. But, yes, uh, but it's associated with coffee, and I effing hate coffee, so I would never order anything that is It's like having amaretto. Amaretto sours, amaretto, amaretto, I don't like amaretto. it. I don't like the flavor of amaretto. So, but, but anyway, I'd rather have a tequila sunrise. I'd rather have a tequila. <laughs> back, back in the day, I, I don't have anything anymore. I Me either. haven't had anything in 12 years. Probably, yeah, probably at least 11. Yeah. Now we just have to get out there and walk. But anyway, long story. Next, the other, one. next one is this one is from Gary's D Stash. And it is fully spun. And this colorway is called Call 1-800-JAMAICA. And I just think it is perfect. Oh, get that in down there. They need to see the other oh, one. It's, it's a different It's end. so good. It's just so, so, so good. Speaking of so, Call 1-800-JAMAICA, we still haven't been able to see Marley. No, and that is on my list of I need to see. Tania got to see it and said she loved it. And she said it is important to see in the theater so you can get the full effect of the music and the movie. And I don't know if I will go to that level because the movie theaters are very hard for me to. But I do love live music, and that is not usually difficult for me. So it's... I'll, I'll look and see what they have for show times this week, but it's, but um, but anyway. To give us a chance to check out the local the theater. theater. Yeah. I'll try. I won't be going, but um, I think that's it. There's not a lot. I'm sorry, I don't have as much knitting. Um, there were some folks who have been asking me for tutorials, and I was gonna try and record them, but. Here's the thing. I've done some searching and there are so many tutorials. And I don't want to redo what's already out there and is very good. So, if you have tutorials that you can't find, I've decided message me and I will on Instagram or on here I will talk about the tutorials I found and link them for you. 
And then if there's something that is truly not out there but really should, then I'll consider doing those tutorials. But honestly, there's so much noise on YouTube. There's so many people. Like, if you're not following Yazolda Teague, you really, really should. She has some incredibly good tutorial content. Same with um, Carol Feller. She has some great tutorial stuff out there. Very Pink Knits has some great stuff. Um, Laura Nilkin, Patty Lyons. I mean, there's just a plethora of people that are doing tutorials. So I don't mind doing them, but there's no point to create something that already exists. So if you have questions, Fill the feed full of what your questions are and I don't mind doing the search and finding those for you and if I can't find them then I'll definitely work up some tutorials for y'all. I think that's all I have. Do you have anything else? Um, I hope you guys have a great rest great week. I don't know that we'll be back next week or not but we'll be back when we can and um, thank you so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.